guys, how are you? Hope you're all going well. Um, the time has come to finally do a, uh, a reveal of my 2021 chopped 200 series Land Cruiser GXL. Been a long time coming, we, we've slowly been getting it together and it's about 99% finished. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through a few things and show you what we've done and explain to you why we've chosen what we've, what we've chosen and um, yeah, just basically give you a bit of a, a rig rundown I suppose it's called. So what we'll do is we'll start at the front we're going to go with um, with bar work and protection. We'll start off with off-road animal bull bar. So I've chosen the off-road animal bull bar purely because I love the look of it. Okay, so I love the sharp lines. I don't really like how some of the bull bars have got the curved entry, uh, curved approach angles and that. I just I just love this bar. If I was to do it again, I probably would have got the bar with the hoops on it. Uh, I don't think it was available when I when I got this. I saw this bar first on Jason Moore for Adventures Land Cruiser and um, and loved it. Yeah, if I was going to do it again, I would probably get the one with the hoops. But nevertheless, I love this bar. Haven't had to use it yet, so um, it's still intact. But yeah, uh, I, I love the look of this bar. Now we've gone with a carbon winch with a Factor 55 um, flat liner coupling. I've had carbon winch on a couple of vehicles now and um, and love them. They, uh, they're a well, well priced and, and pretty light winch. Yeah, it's never let me down. I haven't used it a hell of a lot, but it's, uh, it's still, a, still a really nice winch. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get another one on my next vehicle. So carbon winch is what we've chosen for winches. Now, as you come around to the side, more part of the protection is side steps. Now, the factory side steps on these cruisers are just aluminium. And they are really thin. We've got this, this made up from a mob called Chaos Fabrication here in Mandra. Aaron's a guy's name, he's an absolute guru. These are actually proper legit sliders that we've just put a top on for a side step. So you can jack the car off this, it's designed to hold the whole weight of the car, hitting rocks and all that sort of stuff. Pretty much a must when it comes to four wheel driving. If you're doing a lot of four wheel driving, especially because this rig is a bit longer, it just helps having that, having that side protection. What we've done also is we've made sure that when we've um, design these steps that we bring it out enough so in the car park if someone opens a door on it they're going to dent their door before they um, actually hit your door but also if you're going between lo logs and that sort of thing it's nice to have them stick out a little bit but they're still they're still tucked in nice and neat but just it's important when you're designing side steps make them come out just that little bit extra what we've done too is we've just um, we've got, got a what's called a text coating on it so it's not just like a a matte coating it's a text coating so it's a powder coating so it's just a bit a bit stronger and um, a bit more resistant to scratches and, and that sort of thing so while we're on the protection side of things for the vehicle um, I have got the sides of the vehicle wrapped so four signs here in Mandra um, there's Tay and Young two awesome guys that are the top of their uh, top of their class when it comes to wraps and signage and that they've done a they've done like a gloss black wrap for me so the wrap covers from the bottom of the window down to the sills and if you have a look on the canopy you can see where the wrap basically starts and finishes so my idea behind that was just to protect the main parts of the car I didn't want to wrap the whole car um, it was just mainly just to protect to protect the I suppose the um, the, the main parts that didn't get scratched so when I do sell the vehicle it's a matter of just peeling the wrap off and a quick light buff and uh, she's she's brand new again it also gives me the opportunity to put a few stickers on it and a bit of advertising for our channel and that as well so it's just it's just pretty cool the reason I went wrap and it's one of those things I thought about do I go some sort of paint protection uh, or, or whatever but I decided to go the wrap mainly because of the price so to get this wrapped um, it's, it's going to cost you around two and a half grand if you were to get paint protection on it like self-healing films and all that sort of stuff you can buy they're pretty pricey they they range from anywhere from sort of six grand to, to upward um, like great great stuff I've seen it and I reckon it's pretty cool works and, and not knocking the product at all but just for me for the budget of the, of the build um, it was more cost effective of me just to wrap it and then um, peel it off when we're done and then and then you know when we sell the vehicle another thing is I got a price from a smash repairer you know okay if I was to sell the vehicle and it was quite scratched how much to do a closed door respray um, and that price was six thousand dollars so got me thinking, you know, do I just, do I wrap it? Do I just leave it and then respray it when I sell it? So then I've got brand new paint again or what? But yeah, um, 
you know that's basically why I chose to wrap the car because uh, it was just it was just more cost effective and you know gave me the protection that I needed. Is it as good as um, self healing self healing sort of products? No, that that's pretty cool stuff, but does what I need it to do and uh, and it's really good paint protection. It's not going to protect if a stick hits up and smashes it. But mate, we've been everywhere from Esperance to Exmouth, all the back of um, Yoga Up Dunes, up the back of Dwelling Up, and all that all those sticks and that up there are hard wood. You know, yeah, scratch the uh, scratch the wrap, but the paint will be untouched. So that's why I've decided to go with wrap. Yeah, like I say, the guys in, in Mandra Four Signs. If you need any any uh, any info, give Tay and Young a call. They'll sort you out. Rightio. So on to rims and tyres and suspension. So. When this vehicle was converted originally by a creative conversion, it, we opted to go the 449 GVM upgrade. Now, to get that upgrade, the vehicle had to come with 33s. It was only engineered with 33s, not 35s. Now, um, 33s were great, had no problem with them. All I was looking for was a bit more ground clearance without having to go a massive lift. So, I've got a set of 33s that I put on it when I'm going up north, towing the boat, just for a bit better fuel economy. and. And that sort of thing but when i'm around town four wheel driving i stick the 35s on so i've gone with the 35s i've gone with the fuel pos 20s um love the fuel rims looks awesome and the 35 inch nitto ridge grapplers now i've had nittos on um on five of my vehicles now over the past say five years six years and absolutely love them i've tried um bfgs which are a great tire had the mickey thompson's which are also awesome I've had um, the Bridgestone Jewelers, Desert Jewelers, back in the day. Really nice tyre, but I just can't go past the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. They're a great tyre. Balloon out well, hard sidewall. Uh, I've never had a puncher in one, touch wood. But, uh, yeah, love the Nittos. So, Nitto 35s, Omnifuel, POS 20 rims, just sets the truck off. We're using the ARB Twin Compressor to, um, to air up. So, this compressor we've mounted in one of my um, little side boxes here. It's the ARB Twin Compressor. All my um, tyre stuff, like my deflators, my repair kits and everything is in this one little area here. <laughs> Handy little toolbox and um, we've got the extension hose to reach the boat if need be. But um, yeah, the ARB Air Compressor is a mint little compressor and uh, yeah, pumps up these 35s with ease. To fit 35s on, you have to do a body chop. You know, there is some tyres that aren't quite as aggressive as aggressive as these that you can probably get away with it just a mate of mine's got a uh, got a Sahara 2014 Sahara with the KDSS he's had to relocate his KDSS um, suspension arm but we think we're going to get away with not having to do a body mount chop on that car but most of the time you're going to have to do a body chop now the body chop is is really easy we did ours ourselves um, I basically cut the mount and as are from Chaos Fabrication, just welded a little plate in for me. Um, we basically chop about a little wedge of a starts off at about 25 mil, so basically about an inch, and then tapers off to um, to about 10 mil. So it's just like a little triangle that we cut out. So I'll just jump in, start her up, and um, give you a bit of a look. Okay, so if you have a look down here, um, we've cut this little wedge out out here. So the wedge basically comes out. Um, and uh, we weld in this little plate. If you can imagine this mount comes straight out here and um, and just just fouled with the tire so we just cut like a little wedge and um, happy days we have we've had no issues you can see here it's maybe scrubbed once after uh, like under you know pretty heavy work but not enough to um, you don't even hear it I didn't even know that was there until now but um, pretty easy to do took us about half an hour to cut the cut the um, wedges out 10 minutes for uh, for Azza to weld them in and Bob's your uncle we've had to get rid of the guard as well um, the mud guard and chop you know just trim a bit of this this little skirt off but that's it really really easy to do to get that little bit of articulation if you were driving around normally on the road no problem as soon as you um as soon as you hit a bump or or the or you got downward travel and you're turning it just it just fouls a little bit so 35s bit of a body body chop we'll put some photos up as well of when i was doing the chop just so you can see sort of what's involved and get you a bit of an idea of of, of uh, how we went about it but pretty easy to do
Righty -o. now we're on to the most important part I believe of, the, of a build of any, any four wheel drive for that matter is suspension. Suspension is probably one of the most important things for two reasons, off-road capabilities and safety. So if, you, if you've got a, a stock standard suspension vehicle and you're, and you're modifying it, adding heaps of weight to it like we, we tend to, safety becomes an issue. You know, it's not going to corner how it should do, it's not going to break how it should do. You know, it's going to be more top heavy if you raise it up and put things on the roof. So suspension for a safety point of view is super important. Now for off-road capabilities, I believe spending the money on good suspension is, you know, is something that you'll never look back on. So most average suspensions are fine, you know, you might, you, you're your, um, <coughs> your old man emus, your um, uh, tough dogs and all that sort of stuff, or your middle of the range stuff is, is, is pretty good, but top range suspension like all your remote, remote resi, kings or um, icon, that sort of stuff is, is where it's at. Now a lot of people will give you advice, oh you don't need it unless you're going fast off road. Well, that's not true. You know, when you're loaded up and you've got a heavy rig and you're just cruising through uh, whoops or corrugations or anything like that, even though you're not, not hitting it hard, it's still so much more comfortable and so much more, um, you, you know, put so much more less stress on, on all your components, your suspension and your vehicle and, you know, so high end suspension, if you're setting up a vehicle and you've got it, you know, try and allow for a bit better suspension in your budget is, is basically what I try and I try and do. So um, my last build, my last 200 build, I had I had Icon suspension, which is an American brand, basically um, side by side with with King Off Road suspension, high end suspension. My Tundra that, that I had, I had um, high end long travel remote resi Bilstein, um, a beautiful shop, basically. Um, also made on the off-road racing sort of um, sort of market. On this vehicle, we've decided to go with Outback Armor. So Outback Armor are a um, are an Australian company. They've um, they started making suspension for the military. Uh, they they started off as just a small little workshop, a couple of guys doing work in their back shed. To now being you know what I think is one of the one of the pinnacle uh, suspension companies in Australia. All their suspension is is heavy duty. Um, it's, you know, with this one here, we've opted for the uh, the touring package, so it's all adjustable. It's not remote resi, so we're not doing long distance desert racing. So, um, you know, the remote resi stuff isn't really ne necessary. Although it is cool, it looks good. You know, you look underneath the car; it's got remote resis. You know, if you're anything like me, you sort of froth over a little bit. But um, the Outback Armor, being a big bore shock. Um, you know, it's and being adjustable as well, so you can adjust your rebound. Uh, it's 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 perfect for what I've got. This vehicle has got the GVM upgrade of 4495, so you need some stout springs and shocks. They're going to be able to handle that weight. It can also tow 4.2 ton. So how we've got this set up um, is when I'm towing the boat, I'll stiffen the suspension right up, especially in the, in the back end. I'll adjust it to its firmer settings, and then when I'm not towing, I'll back it off a bit, so it's just a bit more comfortable. Uh, we're also running some um, airbag man airbags for when we do have the boat on. Uh, the advantage of having the airbags is I haven't had to go super hard springs in the in, in the back end. So when I first got this vehicle, it started off with um, six plus six hundreds um, plus six hundred kilo springs in the back end, and it was just a bit bit rough. Um, when I had the boat on, it was perfect, but around town it was just too stiff. So we've changed this one out to um, to. 400 constant kilos, 400 kilo constant I mean, and the change, the difference in the ride is absolutely chalk and cheese. So this thing, when I've got the suspension adjusted on, on soft, it's like riding on a cloud. Um, you know, your grandma would be happy riding in it, but yet you stiffen it up if you're going off-road or something like that. It um, it just hardens the ride up, makes it more sure-footed, and um, and reduces body roll, yeah, just, just all over a better suspension. So. This is my first introduction to Outback Armour. The guys over East are awesome to deal with. Anything, any info you need or any any questions, they're more than more than willing to help you out. But you know, we use this car for proper off-roading. You know, whether we're going flat out through um, through through tracks. You know, I drive pretty hard. I don't I don't nanny my car. We um, we probably drive faster than than most people. Um, Criticise me if you want, but. Um, we, we stick within our limits, but I, I do like to drive a little bit faster through the bush when it's safe to do so. You know, sometimes on the beach too, you, you know, we like to go a bit quicker. So having good suspension that can keep up with that 
is, is super important. But yeah, Outback Armour, if you haven't if you haven't heard of them before or you, you need some info, look them up on the internet, give them a call. Um, there's a lot of dealers around WA, but um, I myself absolutely rate it. Uh, I've had awesome suspension and this is this is right up there with as good as any suspension that um, that you'll use that's uh, you know suited to tow weights and all that sort of stuff so Outback Armour it's good gear I love it Rightio so the conversion the conversion was done by Creative Conversions who uh, who have been doing conversions on um, on, on four-wheel drives for longer than anyone else in Australia. They uh, they pride themselves on being the Pinnacle 200 Series um, conversion company, and this is the second car I've had done by them. The reason I went back is because their quality of work was, was as good as you can get. There's nothing that I picked on the last one that I'd want to change, so, you know, why change companies? We went with them again. This vehicle here, we've gone with the uh, with the 650 chassis extension. So didn't want to go too wide. Still want that forward drive ability. So 650 is um, is what I reckon. It's just perfect. Just that allows you to get that two meter tray on, but still have that good uh, good wheelbase for forward driving and that sort of thing. So they basically chop chop the chassis just behind the um, the back seat here, and they'll add 650 into it. Brace it all up, strengthen it up, get it engineered. You know she's good to go may sound easy but there's more to it than what I'm explaining with this vehicle we've gone the 4495 upgrade so we've got the airbags in the back um, and we've got a brace diff so they remove the diff brace it all up refit it and uh, and that could just handle the extra weight that you're gonna that you're gonna chuck on the back here when we're away this thing is heavy weighs in around about so sort of um, sort of 3.8 ton 3.85 ton so um, depending on how many how many people on board, if the kids come away with us, then it's going to be it's going to weigh a bit more. But if it's just me and the missus, um, you know, full tank of fuel, uh, we're holding 100 litres of water in here as well. So the, the weight gets up there pretty quickly. As this is my daily driver, but I keep it pretty light. So we've got the full fit out, but obviously we only you know I don't I don't put much in the drawers. I try and keep pretty light. So we've got the 650 chassis extension. We've got the brace diff come fact it doesn't come factory but they put the um the airbag man suspension in just to just for that gvm upgrade as well but uh so far have had no problems with it and uh and love the conversion what we've also done while we're under here come and have a look at this diff i don't know if you can see it on the camera but you can see the diff's all braced so they basically put a um put a cradle underneath the diff and weld it in you can see also we're running the um the long ranger fuel tank we use this fuel tank Quite a, like, a quite a few of these fuel tanks we fit them at work um, this is a second one in me 200 series and uh, I love them you can get um, ARB do a plastic tank there's a few different tanks on the market but I keep using what I what I use and uh, don't have any issues with so until I have an issue with this we'll keep using their products and recommend them as well just to recap 650 chassis extension done by creative creative conversions in Queensland 4495 GVM upgrade with a full 4.2 ton towing so we're in the process now of building another boat so um, it's another eight and a half meters and that'll be about around about so four to 4.1 ton when we're going away and uh, yeah so we'll use every bit of that 4.2 um, ton towing capacity yeah once again super happy with creative conversions Right, so onto the roof. We're running the Rhino Rack flat platform. Um, love the Rhino Rack gear. Now they make attachments for just about anything. We've got the the quick release shovel shovel clamps up there. They're lockable. When you're going out bush, you just unlock them, pinch the sides, little um, little clamp lifts up, shovels off. It's literally off in in three seconds. So that is you know when you when you're getting stuck in that sort of stuff, you just want your your gear easy to get off. So we're running the the Rhino Rack shovel holder. We've also got the Rhino Rack um, Max Tracks holders as well, or the, the the clamps. I'm going to change them. They are you got to undo them, but we're going to try and. They, I think they sell like a quick release um, setup for them. So we're going to we're going to investigate them. But we've only um, yeah we haven't had these up long. We just got these on just for a trip to Esperance, just in case we needed them, which we didn't. But yeah, so. Good thing about Rhino Rack is all the little attachments and stuff you can buy. It's, it's it, the the list is endless. 
you'll hear a lot of reports about you can't have too much weight on the roof and you know there are other racks out there that are rated you know heavier than rhino rack but at the end of the day why why do you want too much weight on your roof you know you might want a rooftop tent put up there yeah fair enough but you know if you if you've got too much weight up there then you're asking for trouble if you ask me off-road and that sort of stuff so try and keep your roof racks light think about it a bit more if you've got heavy stuff that you can you know put in the back or, or put underneath or something like that do that rather than try and put too much weight up on your roof only thing that's a little bit little bit strange for me is your on-road and off-road weight differences once again it makes sense it, it, you know if you're going along on a smooth road and um, you've got a rooftop tent on there and it's obviously pretty weighty that's all good but if you're going over racing over whoops and, and jumping it and going crazy and you've got a lot of weight on your roof like a roof rock tent uh, rooftop tent mate you've got to be careful with what you're doing four-wheel driving you know slow down a little bit think about what you've got on the roof and um and just look after your vehicle you know if you've got a rooftop tent on and you're going to hit something and you know you can only imagine it's going to triple triple your force on that roof it's just going to it's just going to pull your studs through so you know use your brains you know if you've got if you've got a a heavy load on your roof just don't go crazy take it easy or think of another way of um of eliminating that problem you know with this vehicle here we um we're going to camp in the back of it we're going to do another video of the canopy a bit of a canopy reveal very soon but um rather than have rooftop tents we're going to camp in the back and i'll show you that setup but you know my thought process behind that was one keeping the weight off the roof and two aerodynamics so rather than having a tent set up on the roof um we've, we've we're going to camp out the back of it um but we'll get in that a bit later but the rhino racks for me um with your your steady light bar brackets to suit your rhino rack all your shovel holders and all your other stuff it's good enough for me i don't need to put 100 kilos up on the roof so um yeah love the rhino rack stuff and on top of that which is more important than anything it looks cool love the backbone setup but uh yeah rhino rack i don't mind it okay so while we're on the roof rack as well um we've uh we've gone with the darchi eclipse 270 awning um the 270 awning is an awesome awning. I had the 30 second awning before this one, which I absolutely loved. But with the Darchi Eclipse, it just gives you a little, a little bit more spread. So um, the 30 second awning comes around, very easy to set up, gives you a 270. But with the Darchi, um, it actually comes forward. So it gives you coverage to about here. So on a long vehicle like this, it covers pretty much the whole vehicle. And um, you know that's the reason that I went with the Darchi over the 30 second awning. But um, yeah, the 30 second awning is probably, um, you know, quality wise, they're identical. They're just both awesome awnings. I just wanted that bit of extra coverage. So, um, so yeah, Darchi, uh, the Darchi awning is a, is a great awning. Okay, just to add to the recovery gear that I, I, I skipped on, um, the, uh, the off-road animal bull bar comes, with, comes factory with rated recovery points. So it's not like you need to buy them extra. They're part. They're, they're all incorporated with the um, with the actual um, the actual mount of the bull bar. It's all uh, it's all chassis mount. So they're actually rated recovery points. Recovery tracks we choose to use are the Max tracks. No reason for it. You know they've been around forever. They're, they're, they're tried and proven. Whether they're better than the other recovery tracks, I don't know. I'll let you know once we use them. But um, yeah, the Max tracks in the red goes with the sort of. The other stuff with the ball bar and that so that's the main main reason why i picked red but yeah don't know they, they um i think they're just as good as every other one but we'll keep you keep you informed now when it comes to recovery gear we've um we've decided to go with saber off-road don't know them from a bar of soap went to the four wheel drive show saw some of their gear and saw a lot of other people's gear as well but saw the um the saber off-road gear and just liked it it looked good it's all good quality all the ropes are um, ropes are uh, a top quality as well. We have used this rope a couple of times now, but um, takes over your snatch strap. So this uh, I don't even know what it's made of. Just this carbon style uh, carbon style rope, I think it is. But yeah, it, it's just supposed to be better than a snatch strap. So we haven't had too many recoveries yet. But uh, but yeah, the saber off road stuff, soft shackle. Um, recovery ring yeah I, I just uh i like the saber stuff but uh, i think they're pretty new to the market as well but yeah saber uh saber off road seem to be uh seem to be good gear so lights and communication i don't do 
a lot of night driving these days. Um, we used to do midnight runs to Exmouth, um, leave at five o'clock in the afternoon and drive all the way through the night. We don't do that as much anymore, but I still do my fair share of night driving. So I want good lights, man. Like seriously, you can't have too many spotlights on your car. We're running the, the steady seven inch sports. Um, the reason I picked the seven inch instead of the, uh, the eight and a half is just because I didn't want the lights to take up, you know, to take up the main stage of my front end. I still love the front end of the new 200s. I opted for smaller lights just so it doesn't overrule everything. So these lights here are a combination. They're a spot spread. They give me about 800 meters down the road. Value for money. They're probably the best light on the market. They're not the most expensive light. They're not the best light, but value for money. I believe they're the best light on the market. Um, so we're running the, um, the four seven inch steady sports and also the 42 inch light bar now that light bar is awesome it gives you that curbside spread so you know to be honest with you you're going to get about 40 meters spread each side of the vehicle into the bushes probably 15 meters in front of you so it doesn't light up there which is impossible but you know it, it lights up awesome from say a 45 degree angle to um you know in combination with these lights 800 meters down the road mate they run um, they're an awesome light get a little bit of reflection from signs because they are a really white light but yeah I can live with that because I can see frog that's 800 meters on the road 800 meters up the road so my steady lights are really good I'm also using steady lights on the canopy so we're using the little steady cubes as like little work lights for, for setting up camp and that sort of thing we've got two at the rear that we use also for setting up camp and um, and also for reverse lights I've got them on a separate switch so is that when I'm in suburbia I'm not blinding everybody around me so um so yeah so they're on they're separately switched and another two this side so these lights are, are, are awesome they'll light up an area of about um say about 30 meters each light will do a radius of about 30 meters but that 30 meters is bright bright white you will still see the rep that you know the um the shadow of these lights 50 meters into the bush but for 30 meters you know you, you can you can write a book within 30 meters they are, they are super bright lights so yeah steady lights value for money are um are a great light they're pretty good guys to deal with as well get all the stuff online or you can call uh the guys at south coast auto electrics they stock them here in mandra and um and yeah they can sort you out comms gme gme i think is um is the best uh the best communication gear on the market when it comes to two ways we're using the uh, GME XRS 370 now this is their new one with um, with the Bluetooth capability so then you can locate your friends so if you've got yourself and three mates in different vehicles you've all got the same same unit you can actually find where they are on a map in the bush um, via GPS so you don't need signal it just you know it just eliminates you know guys getting lost so you know, if you're waiting for someone at camp, someone's coming a couple of hours later, you can have a look on your apps and see exactly where they are. If they're lost, you can find them. Yeah, just a good little safety thing there. But the GME XRS is, uh, is awesome. Everything's on the handpiece. We'll show you inside where we've got it mounted. So this is the um, this is a XRS Connect, um, the, latest, um, the latest GME 2A out. Um, we're just running it with a steady pass-through. So when we don't need it, we can um, put it in the glove box or center console. When we need it, simply just plug it in. Happy days. Just while we're on the two-way, this um, microphone mount is the best invention since sliced bread. That magnet, there's no need to try and look for it when you're going over rough road. It's just basically stick it on and, um, and easy. Absolutely love that. Love that setup from GME. It's also double-sided taped on, so there's no need to, um, to screw it in a dash or anything. It looks like there's screws there, but they're actually just, just glued on. So whoever thought of that, mate, should buy my beer. That's, uh, that's an awesome setup. While we're in the inside of the car, we're going to give you guys a look at the inside. It's all pretty factory. We haven't gone too crazy in here. We haven't gone um, overhead consoles, which is on the bucket list. I'll get that done eventually. But we've, you know, these things are pretty awesome from, from factory. One thing we have done is we've upgraded the head unit. Um, it's just a Chinese Android compatible head unit. Not a bad unit. I think it was about a thousand bucks. We're having a bit of trouble with the um, Apple CarPlay at the moment. The Apple CarPlay kicks in and out. So it's something that we need to, uh, we need to look at. But, um, being Chinese, every, all the apps and that are sort of copy apps, so um, you know you do have issues with them. But 
the factory stereo is good enough, but we just wanted the bigger screen. So we run um, Apple CarPlay, Waze. Um, we also run HEMA Maps through that as well. And also, what we um, we, we tried to do, which we couldn't do the other night, is hook up the Red Vision app, so I can control everything on my Red Vision through my stereo. The Red Vision and all that is in the canopy, which we're not going to elaborate on right now until we do the canopy review. But yeah, that's my plan: is to um, download the uh, Red Vision app and control everything um, through my um, through my screen. At the moment, we just do it through the phone, but it'd be pretty cool to get it through that. And being Android. Um, it should it should be able to uh, be compatible. So we've also got the um, the Red Arc Toe Pro over here, just in one of the factory switch blanks. We use Red Arc whenever we can. There's um, there's a few products on the market, a few different manufacturers of electrical components, but Red Arc is the best that you can buy. It's an Australian company, and um, two things about Red Arc. One thing is their products are second to none when it comes to doing the job that they were designed to do. You know. Um, number two, which is more important than anything, is their, is their service backup. If you buy a Red Arc product, you basically become a Red Arc um, customer for life. Any issues you've got with that, with that, um, with that product, you can ring them any time, um, obviously between business hours, but, um, and they will help you out, guide you through any issues you have. You know, they really are the best in the business when it comes to touring electrical components and you know whether it's BCDCs, tow pros, solar panels, they do they do everything, everything electrical and they are the best. So at the same time as changing the stereo from the factory unit we've added a, um, a 10 inch um, comp sub and amplifier just to give it a bit more bass but these GXLs with the factory speakers all you need to really do is add a sub and an amp and you've got beautiful crystal sound. Um, you don't, we haven't upgraded these speakers yet, but just adding that base to these to this factory system is is work to treat. So we, we haven't upgraded the speakers. We just added a sub and amp, and that's all behind the seats there. We've added some seat uh, some um, floor mats. So these are just floor mats off the internet. They're um they're a hard plastic floor mat, nothing too fancy, but they just protect your floor. You know, I use this for work, so I've got work boots all the time. Um, but these hard plastic floor mats, I mean, we haven't done seat covers yet. Main reason is I usually have some snap-on just throwover seat covers that I use, but uh, we just had the car detailed and we've left them off. But I'm still just trying to find a seat cover that I really like. Uh, I don't want a seat cover that's too heavy. I don't want a seat cover that's too hard. Um, but at the same time, you want it to be, you know, sort of water water waterproof and um, and and some good protection. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that I'm just undecided on yet. I'm definitely going to get some, but I just. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to uh, just try and find some that um, that are exactly what I want. So uh, that's seat covers will be probably the next thing that we'll uh, we'll do. Um, another thing that you know that we've done inside is we we're using the quad lock system for your phone. So we've tried heaps of um, heaps of phone phone brackets. These quad locks are the best one that I've found so far. So I've just got a new phone. Yeah, actually yesterday is iPhone 13 and I don't have the cover for it yet but um, your phone simply locks on, twists and that's it we hardwire it up which we've only just got this not long ago so we haven't hardwired it up so it'll charge through the phone but um, these quad lock systems go on off road bouncing around the phone does not move so uh, we're going to put some of these on the boat as well uh, but yeah the quad lock is, is probably so far out of all the, um, all the phone holders that I've used is the best one so that just about wraps up the interior stuff. We'll now move on to the engine bay. We'll give you a look underneath there and explain what we've done there. Okay, so under the bonnet, this is where all the action happens. We've gone for a dual battery system. Um, now, this is not a dual battery system in the sense where the second battery is a deep cycle battery. We want to run a fridge off it or anything like that. What we've done is we've fitted the dual battery system to act basically like another cranking battery. So we've got a solenoid in here that when the car's running joins the two batteries together. The reason for that is is because the canopy is where all our house stuff is. Fridge and ovens and inverters and all, all that sort of stuff is we don't need a second deep cycle system. So the reason we've gone with this system is that when the car's running the, both those batteries are connected. We have basically 1500 um, crank and amps of power. So when I'm running the winch, uh, when I'm running my compressor, it's it's massive crank and amps. Your winch is going to work 
at optimum capacity. Your compressor's going to run fast. Everything's just going to just going to work better. So no BCDC charging that second battery. Uh, we're not looking for capacity. We don't need that battery to be charged up fully. You know, I don't know if, if many people know, but the alternator will never charge a battery to 100% of its capacity. It'll only charge it to around 70%. Um, which for a cranking battery is fine. It doesn't. You're not looking for that capacity. Um, the ampere hours. You're not looking for that. So yeah, this dual battery system is. Uh, we're treating it as one big, heavy, um, high capacity battery. So uh, 1500 cranking amps is more than enough to uh, to to help your winch out and and uh, your compressor and, and that sort of thing. If the main battery goes flat for one reason or another, I leave the stereo on or something like that. I've got an override switch here that we um, can start off the second battery as well. Engine upgrades and performance upgrades. Uh, we've decided to go with, with a full uh, engine remap, um, transmission remap and lockup kit. We've gone the twin 3.5 inch into single 4 inch torque exhaust, DPF back. In the way of performance, this car goes awesome. The, the Richards Auto Electric's performance package for these vehicles, um, this is a stage two package. It's the perfect blend of, of power, torque, fuel economy. Um, we're not trying to get max power to these vehicles. We're not trying to, you know, get torque figures to up around a thousand newton meters of torque. It's not about that. What it's about is reliability, off-road and, and, and towing torque, uh, which is which is all, all that it's about, um, and fuel economy. I, I've probably gained around um, around 100, 100 kilometers per tank you know for both tanks holds a lot of fuel holds 287 liters between the main tank and the long ranger tank so but to get a hundred kilometers extra with the remap done is um, is pretty handy at the moment this car is pushing between 720 and 740 newton meters of torque which you know I don't really care too much about the power it's the torque where it's at you know down low torque it makes makes like um you know makes max torque at about uh, 1800 rpm between 16 and 18, 1800 rpm which is awesome no need to over rev the vehicle um, and that in, com in combination with the transmission remap is uh is just it's a totally different car to drive than factory transmission remap allows it to drop in a six gear at about 96 k's an hour it, um, it, it sharpens up your shifts, uh, you, you know, your, your gear shifting. It holds first gear for a little bit longer and then changes from second to third earlier to use that torque. And, um, and it just the best way to describe it is it seems to be in the right gear all the time, you know, when you're loping around, um, loping around roundabouts or just around corners, rather than it be in a too high gear and it's got to kick down two or three gears, it may kick down one gear, but it just seems to be more responsive and ready to go when you want it to go. The lockup kit. The lockup kit is, is is a bit of a touchy, um, is, I suppose, topic when you're talking about lockup kits. There's a lot of companies around that'll try and sell you the story. If you don't need a lockup kit, we can do the same thing with a with a transmission remap. Well, that's impossible. There's no way you can do exactly the same thing with a um, transmission remap as you can with a dedicated lockup kit. With the the difference between the two, I'm just going to give you two scenarios why a lockup kit. Um, will do more than what a remap will do. The first one is you cannot get a remapped transmission ECU to have full lockup in second and third gear. It's impossible. They just don't do it. So you have basically engine braking. You know, second and third gear with your with your lockup kit, you've got engine braking. Um, and also, if you're doing a lot of slow stuff like hill climbs and that sort of thing, to have that torque converter locked up, and I've I've tried this myself, it's chalk and cheese. You know, you've got no slippage. You know, it's, it feels like almost you're changing two gears when the torque converter is locking up and unlocking when you when you need power instantly. But um, with the lockup kit, gives you that ability to have that lockup in second and third gear. Cannot do that with a with a transmission remap, no matter what anyone tells you. Um, but yeah, it, it's if you're go if you're towing a van and you're going over, over east and you've got massive long hills to be able to hold that lock up and and use second or third year gear engine braking to, you know, to um, sort of save the brakes a little bit, is underrated. You, you, you know, it's so much better having that um, having the ability to lock up at slow speed. Another and, and the number the number two thing that um, your uh, your lock up kit can do that a uh, ECU remap can't do is hold lock up. So every single time you're changing down gears or up gears with an ECU, uh, sorry, with the transmission remap, 
it's coming in and out of lockup. So if you're changing third, from fourth to fifth, it's go, it'll 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 um, fall out of lockup and then fall back into lockup. It it can't hold lockup with a um, with a lockup kit. Once you once you press that button, it's in lockup. It's in lockup, up changing and down changing. It, it doesn't it can't come back out of lockup. When you're doing transmission remap, it does. It comes out of lockup. Um, it'll fall out of lockup when it changes up, and it'll fall out of lockup when it changes down. So every time you change gears, it'll go into lockup. Uh, it'll fall out of lockup and then go into lockup. Then it'll change another gear. It'll jump out of lockup and then into lockup. So you're still getting slippage. Is it better than factory? Definitely, it's better than factory. There's no doubt about it because it's not coming in and out of lockup when you're cruising along at 100 k's an hour, you know, on the highway. But can it do exactly what a lockup kit can do? No, it can't do that. So do your homework yourself. Richards Auto Electrics, Stefan from Richards Auto Electrics is an absolute guru. Anything you need to know um, to put your mind at ease, he'll uh, he'll definitely help you out with that. But um, you know, there's a few companies over in WA that say they you don't need a lockup kit. We can do the same thing. They can't. Ask them. Ask them if they can, um, you know, have lockup in second and third gear. Ask them if it stays in lockup when you're going up and down gears. It, it doesn't do that. So you are still going to get a little bit of slippage. Uh, if you're working the if you're working that car up a long hill, changing foot like you know th third and fourth, third and fourth, um, you're still going to have lockup slip. You know, it's unavoidable. So, um, you know, that's why we sort of, uh, we've gone for the lockup kit, the transmission remap, and the uh, engine remap. It's pretty much the perfect setup uh, to get the most out of your cruiser. Um, you know, I don't know anybody who's had any issues with uh, remapping, um, either transmission, engine, or, um, or uh, lockup kits in the way of, you know, damaging gearboxes or engines. If they're done right, um, you don't have an issue. I think the only time you're going to have an issue is if you take it to these tuners that'll try and write their own tune. Um, they're trying to push the envelope. They're trying to get max horsepower, max um, max torque, and just trying to trying to really work to the edge of that envelope of engine safety. Like you know, with Richard's Auto Electrics um, remaps, they're well and truly within those safety param parameters. They're not trying to get um, you know not not trying to run 10 second quarter miles with these things. They're just trying to uh, make it uh, a nicer vehicle to, to drive and uh, you know get the most out of it for what you need um, so yeah anything you need to know ring Richards Auto Electrics um, South Coast Auto Electrics also do uh, they're the local um, local dealers in in the Peel region to do your tunes lock up kits and that sort of stuff um, so hit uh, hit them up if you need to but yeah there's your argument for pro and cons for lockup kit versus transmission remap. Uh, any other questions, give uh, give Stefan at Richards Auto just a call. But this vehicle here drives amazing. Um, just off the performance side of things for a second, we've opted with the PDP secondary fuel filter. I think a secondary fuel filter, especially if you're going up north, is, is, is a must. I would not go north without it. We've been up there before and um, we've been through you know, went up to Kununurra. We've been through two filters in a thousand k's, just with just with crappy fuel. Changing a filter is a lot easier and a lot cheaper than putting a set of injectors in it. So, if you're going up north, you can do a lot of miles up north in the bush. The secondary fuel filter is um, is a must. Jump and toppy again with the um, with the engine tune. We've decided to go with the EGR off um, option. So in the tune, they can turn the EGR off. So because of that reason, I haven't decided to go with a catch can. You know, with the EGR off, I think there's less. You know, there's obviously less stuff that's going to go through into the engine. So, um, you know, whether that's right or wrong, everyone's going to have their have their uh, opinion of it. But um, the reason I haven't gone with the catch can is because we've uh, turned the EGR off. So, um, so yeah, that's that's the reason behind that. We're running the K and N air filter. Um, we run that basically when we're around here. If we're going on trips up north and we're in a convoy we might put the factory um, air cleaner in but uh, the, the, the K&N air filter definitely um, is a bit of, gives it a better flow. We are going to um, go to change the airbox eventually but um, I've been keeping an eye on that. We've had no dust go in there at all. Um, we put like a little bit of um, a little bit of Vaseline around the edges just to stop it but you know there has not been one one little skerrick of dust on the uh, clean side of that air cleaner. So just moving over, while we're on the topic of the air cleaner, we're using the Safari R-Max Snorkel. Um, 
do I get a stainless snorkel or not? Mate, if you've ever driven a 200 series with a stainless snorkel, with the snorkel head rear facing right near that window and you like to drive around with your window down, think again. The noise that those things produce, even at 70 k's an hour, they seem to be noisier at cruise. You know, when you really got your boot into it, um, they're pretty quiet. But when you're just cruising around at, say, 70, 80 k's an hour, mate, that suction, it just, there was no way I was going to be able to put up with that. And I always have my window down. So um, the Safari Armac snorkel, 5-inch snorkel, um, you know, we modify the airbox when we fit these things because obviously everything's opened up. But, uh, yeah, I would not go past the Safari Armax. You know, people like the uh, the Stainos for, for the looks. I think this suits the look of this car perfectly. And, um, yeah, I, I, there's no way I was going to put up that noise from a um, from a, from a uh, rear-facing Staino. So, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. We're going to do a full reveal video of the canopy once we're finished there. Um, but apart from that, if you've got any questions or, or anything like that, hit us up and we'll do our best to answer you as soon as we can but hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you out on the tracks